The story continues, Yuya and the others are currently at the palace, and Lexia says she never imagined there would be anyone else as powerful as Yuya. After saying that she is relieved to see Yuya okay, Owen appears. Yuya is invited to the meeting where they will decide what to do with Prince Rhaegar, he says, and he also asks for his presence. The soldiers then remove Rhaegar's mask and shirt as the action pans back to everyone in the room. The injuries on Rhaegar's body are then revealed, and when he notices Lexia's expression, he wonders if she is feeling sorry for him. Rhaegar says that she is to blame for everything, and he explains that he turned out this way as a result of getting sucked into her magical outburst. The wounds that Rhaegar received from Lexia should have already healed, King Arnold says, but Rhaegar insists that they did. But because of how much Lexi's magic was present, his body began to feel out of control. And the only way to control it was to keep destroying it. Because of that, he ended up with his current body. He says that his father must have been aware of his suffering and asks him why he didn't intervene. Rhaegar wonders if his father has kept him isolated because the king mentions that he has no means of treating Rhaegar's condition. No one here can comprehend what it's like to be thought repulsive and unfit to be seen in public, he claims. Adding that the isolation from the castle fuels in him an uncontrollable desire to destroy Lexia. They are unable to comprehend the suffering he endures, and Yuya believes that Rhaegar is still the same person he once was. Then Rhaegar says that he no longer sees the point in living, and he begs them to kill him. Yuya then says that he wants to try something and pulls out his healing potion. The others wonder what Yuya is attempting to accomplish as he forces Rhaegar to consume the potion. The potion then completely heals Rhaegar's wounds, which shocks everyone. Rhaegar then notices that all of his wounds have vanished when he looks in the mirror. Then Yuya says he doesn't know what's happening. But if the wound is what caused this condition, there are medications that can treat it. Everyone is shocked to hear him say that this medicine is known as the cure all herbs. Yuya believes he did read in the herb description, but it was a legendary plant and the soldiers confirmed that this is the genuine article. Yuya tells the king that he doesn't need to worry because he has a lot of them growing in his garden, and the king apologizes for making him use such a priceless item. The prince continues by saying that even if his wounds were to heal, it would be of no use because he would still receive a death sentence. The king then mentions that Rhaegar attempted to kill Lexia in response to Lexia's question about what his brother's sin is. Rhaegar mentions that Lexia will be able to forgive him for this, it is not that easy. According to Lexia, there shouldn't be any issues because it is. Lexia informs her father that he will have to forgive Rhaegar as well and the situation should then be resolved if the victim forgave the offender's actions. The king then mentions that Rhaegar also targeted the victim. Being a devoted father, the king hesitates to do it. He ultimately yields to obnoxious demands. Then Lexia says that she wishes she could get along with his brother. After hearing this from Rhaegar once more, Rhaegar sobs and thanks Yuya for everything he did before the king changes the subject to awarding Yuya a reward. Yuya should wed her, Lexia says, and Luna adds that he ought to do so as his reward. Instead, the girls begin to quarrel over that who will get married Yuya, and Rhaegar offer the suggestion of something to the king. The king continues by saying that he will give Yuya the residence and lands of Rhaegar as well as the title of knight. Baron Yuya later enters a room within the castle and announces that he will be spending the night there. Yuya then says that he is tired today and goes to bed. While he is asleep, Yuya has a dream in which he fights the girl with silver hair and he wakes up from the dream. After school is over, Yuya's friends invite him to hang out with them, but he declines, saying that he has something important to take. The scene then cuts to you still at school. Yuya ignores scare of Kaori's attempts to stop him and continues on his way while claiming to be in a hurry. Rhaegar's response to Yuya's question about the girl with the silver hair comes to mind. He was informed by Rhaegar that he has no knowledge of the girl because he only recently met her through the Dark Guild and as a result fell victim to manipulation. Then Yuya recalls that the girl had mentioned the influence of evil, and he speculates that the rabbit had also informed him of this. The action then shifts to Yuya practicing his fight against the girl in the vast demon territory, and he muses that perhaps he will have to deal with evil next time. He believes that the rabbit may know how to defeat her, but for the time being he must do what he can to prepare for the battle against the evil forces. The girl then attacks Yuya, who then confronts her and demands to know why. The girl says that you will get in the way of her plans, and that she also needs to exact revenge. 
After hiding Akatsuki, Yuya says he doesn't understand what the girl is saying and that he will ask her for more information once he has defeated her. Yuya's doorbell is rung in the alternate reality by Kaori, who discovers that it is unanswered and that the door to Yuya's home is open. A then goes inside and enters the alternate reality. Yuya is nowhere to be found, and she recalls that Yuya warned her not to leave the house because there are monsters in the forest. The girl then launches an attack as Kaori hears distant gunfire. The girl responds that Yuya doesn't need to know what he did to deserve her vengeance and attacks him after Yuya asks what she did. Yuya dodges, the girl reattaches him. The girl believes Yuya is strong and that she needs to put an end to him when Yuya and Knight fight her together. The girl then attacks Yuya, who then avoids curious attack and appears just as the girl notices Kaori. The girl then makes an attempt to attack Kaori, but Yuya stops her and takes advantage of the chance to corner Yuya. Since Yuya has no way out of this predicament, the girl attacks him. However, the rabbit arrives just in time and says Yuya, mentioning that he has been digging. He also addresses the girl by name, which he calls Yudi, to stop the fight. She wonder how the rabbit knows her name. The murdered divine archer Yuri's successor then makes mention of her intention to exact revenge on the world. The rabbit says that this is not what her master would want for her. And Yuri responds that she doesn't need to hear this from someone who waits for evil to manifest in their world before acting. She says that although her master had long protected humans, in the end they had betrayed him and killed him. The rabbit continues by saying that it is their duty as divine beings to defend the world from evil, and they cannot break this duty or use divine means to end the world. Yuri claimed she doesn't give a damn any of this as she only inherited her master's skill from him and not his title of divine. Yuri then attacks them. The rabbit instructs Yuya to use his legs, and when Yuya tries to do so, Yuri attacks him. The rabbit then instructs Yuya to copy the move. Yuri uses the skill of the rabbit to block the attack after using earlier Yuri to attack them once more. Knight and the rabbit now have a chance to attack and they severely hurt her. The rabbit declares that as a divine being, he must fight to defend this world, and Yuri says that those who killed her master are not worth anything. She says they are worthless because they only engage in ugly fights. And the rabbit says it's not up to them to decide how valuable they are. The Yuri threatens to simply wipe them all out if they can't agree on the value of humans and she begins to wield evil. Yuri then engages in combat with the rabbit after the rabbit believes that Yuri has become an evil divine being. Yuya cannot believe that Yuri is matching the rabbit blow for blow. Akatsuki then emerges from hiding and then makes Yuri. Lose all of her evil powers using his holy ground talent, and you kill her afterwards. The rabbit continues by pointing out that other holy beings exist. They also include this pig in addition to the divine. The rabbit then says that since Yuya can no longer use her evil abilities, he will leave Yuri in her care. After he departs, Yuri awakens and Yuya queries her. She begins to cry when Yuri describes her master as a kind man who was brimming with love when asked about him. Then Kaori shows up to look as soon as Yuya, and Yuya notice a monster behind her, he dispatches it with his spear. Yuya claims that this is his other normal life, which surprises Kaori. When Yuya asks Kaori if she is afraid of him, she responds that she can never be afraid of him and that nothing has changed since then. He then says that he can easily defeat his opponents, even if they are monsters. First, Yuya assisted her. The action then shifts to show Kaori meeting Lexia and Luna. The three of them become friends and even take a bath together. Yuya reconciles with his younger siblings and Yuri enrolls at Yuya's school as a new student. That brings the season to an end.